Jarrett Jackson on 99.3 and 105.5. The Eagle this morning in Boston is easily one of the most iconic rock bands of all time. Although they've called themselves just another band out of Boston, most of us know that they are the band out of Boston. And uh, they're bringing their hyperspace tour to Verizon Arena in North Little Rock on April 26th at 7.30. We have the pleasure of visiting with longtime Boston band member Gary Peel. Gary on the phone with us this morning. Gary, good morning. Hey, good morning, Jared. How are you folks doing there? Excellent. We're so excited that you guys are bringing the hyperspace tour to Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, you guys obviously love to be out on the road doing shows. You just did the 40th anniversary tour and now this one. So uh, I know it's exciting for you. Yeah, it's either call it the 41st anniversary tour (laughs) or jump right to hyperspace. So that's where we are. Just jumped right to hyperspace. I tell you, that's uh, kind of a, a theme for the band, Boston. And we'll get into uh, Tom and his uh, love for spaceships maybe here in a minute. But uh, first, uh, let's get to know Gary Peel, of course, guitarist. And uh, you've been doing music since you were a very young man. I heard as a teenager, once upon a time, you had a very interesting guitar teacher. Yes, uh, when I was in a high school band, one of the other guitar players in the band said, hey, this is guy giving lessons in the next town over, and this is when I lived uh, in the San Francisco area. And he said, uh, this guy's really great. We should all take lessons from him. He's so good, you know. I said, okay, so we went down there, and <clears throat> he was great. He taught us some cool stuff. And we went to see his band, the Warlocks, at the time. Mm-hmm. We had a pizza parlor, and they were great, you know. And uh, But a few months later, they changed their name to the Grateful Dead, and that was Jerry Garcia giving us lessons. <laughs> wow. Took guitar lessons from Jerry Garcia. And you were in Sammy Hagar's band, speaking of legendary rock and roll guys. Uh, for years, you played with Sammy and, and on a lot of great albums. And, and then uh, tell us the story of how, I know when he left to go to Van Halen, you were kind of without a job for a, just a few seconds. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, actually, one of the first gigs I did with Sammy was uh, as opening act for Boston. Uh, Sammy's manager knew their manager, and we got to end up their first tour in 77 uh, as the opening act for the last uh, you know dozen shows or so. And they liked us, and they said, hey, you guys should open our entire second tour when we do that uh, next year in 78 through 79. And that's just what we did. So we traveled all around the country with those guys, and of course, I, I always loved their band, and so it was a thrill for me to be able to watch Boston every night. Uh, and then, uh, uh, of course, Sammy left to join Van Halen, and Tom had heard about it and gave me a call and said, uh, gee, we're working on our third album. Would you come back here and play on the last song to be recorded? Everything else is recorded but this one last song. And I said, oh, sure. So I left from my last gig with Sammy, which was Farm Aid One out in Champaign, Illinois, flew directly from there to start uh, you know, working with Tom in the studio on that last song. And uh, again, we had known each other all those years and, and hit it off. And he said, well, why don't you move back here and join the band and we'll see what happens. And <laughs> So I've been here ever since. So wasn't out of work for a day. I mean, how <laughs> lucky can a guy get? Oh, man. How, so how many years has it been now with Boston? Well, that was 85. So yeah, it's what, 32 years here now. Wow, time flies. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard a Boston song on the radio? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I was driving in my hometown of Petaluma, California, and I pulled up to a red light, you know, and, and uh, the guy in the car behind me, not sorry, the guy in the car in front of me jumps out of his car and runs back to me, and I say, oh, I know this guy. <laughs> he, and he comes and, and bangs on my window and says, hey, Gary, quick, this turn on the radio. This is the song, this is the band I've been telling you about. Boston, check this out. And I turned it on, and it's like, wow, that was just a fantastic song and sounds. I just couldn't believe the sound coming out of my cheap car radio. So, yeah, I definitely remember where I was. Of course, that sound is uh, Tom Schultz. It really, he, he engineered that sound, literally engineered that sound. Uh, absolutely, in his basement there in Boston. Uh, and he said, yeah, it took me about four years to make that first album, uh, and he, of course, kept making it over and over again and, and refining it and making it better. and when it, So then when the record company said, okay, well, you know, we're going to sign you guys, and, but now we'll go into a real studio to record it, Tom said, no, 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 this is it. This is the sound I want. You know, I, I did this in my basement, but that's the way it should sound. And so, yeah, so in my mind, Tom started that the whole recording phenomena that 
Of course, nowadays people can do it on their laptop, you know, but back then he, you know, bought some recording equipment and learned how to use it and certainly made the most of it. And of course, over the years, has has built sound processors and amps. He's an MIT graduate. The guy is a, he's a pretty much a genius, isn't he? <laughs> uh, well, I would say so. Yeah, he, he's got, uh, after he uh, got out of college, he worked for Polaroid for a number of years and holds like 29 patents there on different devices. And of course, uh, when they put together the lists of 100 greatest guitar players of all time, you know, Tom always shows up. But he's also on the list of 100 greatest keyboard players of all time. And there's nobody else in the world that's on both those lists, you know. Then you throw in the 100 greatest rock songs of all time. There's always a couple of Boston songs. Producer, engineer, and built all the amplifiers that we're using on stage. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a really special guy. And and my privilege to know him all this long. People have said that you're Tom's right-hand man. I know, in fact, I've heard Tom quoted as saying about you that he'd be lost without you. So uh, besides being the guitarist for Boston, uh, what are some of the other roles and some of the other ways that you help Tom in, in what you guys do? Well, I, again, I knew a bit about electronics uh, going into it. I had always tinkered with stuff, and I was always the guy in the band who could fix your cable, you know, when it broke or... <laughs> Uh, even amplifiers to a point. And so when I uh, joined Boston back in 85, one of the first things I did was to go into uh, his company. Again, he was making amplifiers, preamps and all that. And so I said, well, gee, I know a little bit about this. And he said, yeah, come on down, take a listen to what we're working on. Let us know what you think, you know, if you like this as, you know, for a sound for as a guitar player. So I'd, I'd go in there, and then when it was time to make a change, you know, Tom and the other engineers, who were all musicians as well, they'd be sitting around changing, you know, soldering the resistors and capacitors. I said, well, gee, I know how to do that. And so I just started doing it. So I, I ended up going to work there every day with uh, Tom and the rest of the guys at the factory. And so, again, we still use those amps that we were building back in, you know, the 80s, because they... They've got that sound. And so, yeah, there's probably nobody else even on the crew that knows the amps better than me and Tom because we actually soldered them together. That's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, getting back to what I was going to say earlier is, uh, you know, all your albums have spaceships of some sort. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, on, uh, Tom told me the story on that first album uh, that they chose the name Boston. And so uh, several people came up with some other ideas about Boston. Well, you know, there's Boston baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> they, perhaps there was going to be a picture of a pot of baked beans, and Tom said, well, that's really not. And then how about Boston cabbage? Well, there could be a head of cabbage on the front cover. No, you know. And then somebody came up with the spaceship idea. And, of course, uh, if for those that know that first album cover, the Earth is exploding, and all the different cities are escaping to go to new worlds. And one of them is this guitar-shaped spaceship that obviously came from Boston. So all the other cities are escaping somewhere else, but here's uh, Boston uh, taking off the exploding Earth. <laughs> and so, anyway, it, it stuck. People just love that image, and uh, so, yeah, we, we just uh, kept it going. Well, I feel like your music is otherworldly myself. Well, thanks, yeah. <laughs> Small step for a band, but a giant leap for band kind. <laughs> now, what is the uh, difference, would you say, between working with Tom and working with Sammy? They seem like, obviously, both very, very talented guys, but different. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, again, I had eight great years with Sammy, and, and Sammy is what you see is what you get. <laughs> you know, he's always in a good mood, always ready to party, of course, terrific musician, and just goes by the seat of his pants, you know, it's like, <laughs> turn it up to 10 and let's rock, you know, and so that, that was great. Uh, but uh, again, Tom's <laughs> usually a little more thoughtful, and, and uh, people say, why does it take you guys so long to record albums? Well, it's because we want to try all the possibilities, and, and again, t Tom does it, everything himself, you know, the engineering and the producing and all that, and so it, it takes him a little longer, but uh, the results are fantastic. And Tom's a big guy. He's, what, 6'5", is that right? Does he still play basketball? You're a pretty tall guy, too. Uh, yeah, uh, um, a little shorter. I'm only about 6'3". Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Tom was on the basketball team in college and high school even, and, uh, yeah, still plays some pickup games. But Do you play together? You guys play one-on-one? -on -one? No, I was on the track team in high school, so I can high jump or... <laughs> You know, Chris uh, ran track as well, but uh, so yeah, I just w didn't get into basketball. 
Now, I heard rumor that, you know, your first album was Third Stage, uh, that, that Tom injured his back during the recording of that and had to be lying flat on a surfboard. Is that true? Uh, yes. Uh, again, the sports injury. <laughs> and I heard his back. Said, oh, man. So, uh, you know, he put together uh, just kind of a, a surfboard, but a, a roll around uh, thing that he could land so that he didn't have to sit up or stand while he was mixing that album. But uh, luckily, that was <laughs> just a short time. Just you know, he just he just did that for a bit, so that he could uh, you know, because he really wanted to finish that album. And he said, I, "I can't wait till I get better. I got to finish it now." You know, so yeah, he had to kind of lay down to. <laughs> <laughs> So laying down on the job, is he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, there, there's a song on the original Boston album, Rock and Roll Band, and on the liner notes, it's listed as two minutes and 60 seconds, not three minutes. Do you know the story behind this? No, no, that's funny, because I, you know, I must have looked at that album cover a million times, but I, I didn't notice that. I didn't know if it was a misprint. Maybe I got a unique copy, or if that was on every album cover. Holy smoke, I'm going to have to dig that out and take a look. Maybe I got a uh, a uh, copy from someone illegally. I don't know. I hope not. But It's a bootleg. That's probably the, worth a million dollars. Uh, it may be. Well, I need to dig that out of the uh, cassette tape collection. Uh, or 8-track. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, your, your favorite Boston song, Gary? Well, uh, I really love playing Walk On from the fourth album, uh, that same title. It's a long song, and it's kind of difficult to play, but we all get a chance to improvise during that, you know, like, like go for it, you know, do a solo here, like we all do, all of us, and so it's a lot of fun to play live, and because and, you never know what you're going to get from one night to the next. And you're going to be playing it live April 26th in Little Rock at Verizon Arena. What's the lineup going to be for the band? What's the current lineup? Yeah, same as we've had for the last uh, four years here now. So, uh, Tommy, Tommy DiCarlo on vocals, and because he's just the greatest. Uh, Beth Cohen on guitar and keys. Uh, we're going to have two drummers again, as we've had uh, for many tours here. Curly Smith will start with us, so you'll see him in Arkansas. And he's from Arkansas, as a matter of fact. Uh, and then uh, Jeff Neal will take over halfway through the tour on drums. And then the bass player is Tracy Ferry. We are so much looking forward to this. April 26th, Gary Peel along with us, longtime Boston guitarist. And Gary, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to visit with us. Hey, thanks, Jared. We're looking forward to coming to town. And certainly uh, stop by so I can shake your hand and meet you in person there. Oh, I would love that. You've been one of my favorite rock and roll bands of all time. And I say that with sin all sincerity. Well, thank you, sir. Gary Peel, our guest, Boston guitarist on 99.3 and 105.5 The Eagle.